Well, welcome to the 700 Club. Israel is ready for an invasion of Rafah despite U.S. opposition to the attack. Yesterday, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said it will happen. There is a date. The Biden administration has proposed another ceasefire in exchange for hostages, while Netanyahu continues to insist he won't settle for anything less than total victory. Chris Mitchell reports from Jerusalem. On Monday, Netanyahu announced Israel is not finished with Hamas in Gaza. We're working all the time to achieve our goals, primarily the release of our hostages and achieving a complete victory over Hamas. This victory requires entry into Rafah and the elimination of the terrorist battalions there. It will happen. There's a date. After months of on and off negotiations, the U.S. has reportedly proposed a new ceasefire deal. It would see a six-week halt in the fighting and exchange 40 hostages for 900 Palestinians imprisoned in Israel. Hamas is expected to respond to this latest proposal by Tuesday night. If they agree, the truce could begin as soon as Wednesday. The Biden administration has warned it could change its policy towards Israel if it goes forward with an invasion of Rafah. There are also signs it would like to see Netanyahu replaced as leader. Monday, the U.S. Secretary of State held high-level talks with the leader of Netanyahu's opposition, who might be more pliable to White House demands. A hostage deal is doable. It is a difficult deal. This is a deal we might not like, but it's doable, and therefore it needs to be uh, made. Five families related to the hostages met with Pope Francis Monday, who they say described Hamas in no uncertain terms. He called Hamas evil, which they are. He called them bad guys and evil. And um, he was very clear that the hostages need to come home. As the IDF regroups and the U.S. calls for peace, some Israelis are taking to the streets, demanding the total defeat of Hamas. They say the world is putting pressure in the wrong place. Instead of telling the international community to place pressure on Hamas to release the hostages, they, they're placing pressure on Netanyahu and our government. We didn't start the war, they did, okay? They murdered 1,200 of our people. The mood in general is a grim determination to win the war. Military analyst and IDF Reserve Major Elliot Chodoff says most Israelis are firmly behind achieving victory over Hamas. There's a very loud counter movement, and I emphasize loud because the overwhelming majority who are not speaking are the, uh, the bulk of the population the reservists and their families. Chodoff says it's important to pray for Israel now. Pray for Israel's well-being, pray for Israel's safety, and pray for victory, because ultimately that's where, where, where the well-being is going to come from. Meanwhile, at the world court, an Israeli ally is under attack. Germany is rejecting an accusation by Nicaragua that it's violating international law by providing arms and support to Israel in its fight against Hamas. Nicaragua urged the judges to stop Germany from sending arms shipments, claiming it enables acts of genocide in Gaza. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. Well, if you get a chance, read the defense that Germany is putting in front of that international court, that it's Hamas that's committing the war crimes. It's Hamas that's using civilians as shields. It's Hamas who's setting up in mosques and churches and hospitals and schools and, and using them as launching bases for attacks against Israel. The pressure needs to be on Hamas and to see the world reaction now. I, I don't understand what would cause Nicaragua to ally itself with a Muslim death cult, but that's exactly what they're doing. They're giving aid to Hamas and allowing Hamas to continue war crimes. If you want to see the civilians of Gaza freed, free them from Hamas. It's not the attack from Israel. If Hamas would surrender, if they would release all of the hostages, if they would vow to never attack Israel again, well, then we could have peace. But until such time, Israel is fighting a war for their own existence. It's amazing to me to hear politicians right here in the United States give aid and comfort to Hamas. 
That's exactly what they're doing when they call for unconditional ceasefires on the part of Israel. They're telling Hamas, all you have to do is wait. We are going to come to your aid. You're not going to be deposed from power. You're going to be able to regroup. You're still going to have Gaza, and you'll be able to rebuild strength so you can attack Israel again. That's the message that they're saying. The message needs to be clear. October 7th can never happen again. Hamas has to surrender. Hamas has to give up its hostages. And let me remind American politicians, five of those living hostages are American citizens. Are you not pledged to protect the, your own citizens against this kind of terror? These, these things make no sense to me. We need moral clarity, the clarity that FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, had in World War II. When he was asked about peace, he said, the only way we'll have peace with Germany, the only way we'll have peace with Japan is for them to unconditionally surrender. That needs to be the same standard for Hamas today. Well, much of the world seems indifferent to the plight of the hostages still held in Gaza. All the while, their desperate families remain determined to fight to bring them home. Efren Graham has that story and more from the CBN Newsroom. Efren? Gordon, six months into the war, the anguish and frustration felt by these families is taking its toll. Still, they won't stop working to see their loved ones set free. George Thomas has their stories. I thought it would be easier after six months of interviewing, but it's not. Since October 7th, Liran Berman has traveled virtually nonstop to tell his story, carrying around his neck a simple message, bring them home. Can you describe what the last six months has been like for you, sir? Uh, a roller coaster of emotion, uh, mostly hellish. Uh, we have no good days, we have okay moments. Berman's twin brothers, Gali and Ziv, among more than 130 hostages, still being held by Hamas in Gaza. He and others like him are pleading with Qatari leaders to pressure the terror group to release the hostages. Because we know that they are the key player that can facilitate a deal, and we saw that they facilitate the first deal. As the war grinds on, these families grow increasingly desperate with no resolution in sight for their loved ones. My life, it stopped in 7 October, and all I'm doing is just fight for her. Among them, Simona Steinbrecher, whose daughter, Doran, was captured on October 7th from Kibbutz Kafa Aza. In January, Hamas released a video of Doran and two other Israeli hostages. Thousands of Israelis are taking their fight to the streets, calling on Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to strike a deal to free the captives. Meanwhile, at the Shifahim Hotel, just north of Tel Aviv, hundreds of survivors from Kibbutz Kafa Aza still find themselves in limbo, six months after Hamas changed the world. It's about uh, almost 7 p.m. here at Hotel Shifaim. It's an unusual scene uh, because you have uh, members of the Jewish community right behind me who are saying their evening prayers. In the last six months, this hotel has been converted for members of the Kafar Aza kibbutz. About 400 people today call this place their home. Mobile homes are set up next to the hotel to accommodate more families. 52 residents of Kibbutz Kafa Aza died October 7th, including Karen Flasher's parents, who still struggles from the nightmare of that day. They're not coming back, and there's nothing I can do and no one that can help me bring them back. So for me, supposedly, I can start healing, but it's not possible because this is not just me. Recently, these kibbutz residents confronted a Swiss Red Cross delegation visiting the hotel, demanding to know why the aid agency isn't doing more to exert diplomatic pressure on Hamas. And if the authorities, whoever they are, state actors, non-state actors, don't give the Red Cross access, yes, then you cannot help. It's mm -hmm. basic as that. An Israeli team returned from Cairo after negotiations with Hamas to release the hostages in exchange for a ceasefire. So far, both sides remain far apart. George Thomas, CBN News, Tel Aviv.